Matt, thanks for jumping on. And my pleasure. Overall, you and I have known each other for a very long time. So for the most part, at this stage in our life, we both started, maintained, grew, sometimes made some type of exit of companies and corporations. So currently, too, I know that something that's near and dear to your heart is a, a tech company that you have, Gear Focus. And for me, I'd love to dive into a little bit of thought process built around that from a perspective of really the startup, maintaining growth trajectory and onward and upward in that thought process. How about this, actually? Let's do a little bit. What was the inspiration for Gear Focus? The inspiration for Gear Focus was I was having back surgery and I couldn't play rock and roll and carry heavy amps around anymore for a year post back surgery. So I said I need a new hobby. And I said, well, let's pick up the old photography hobby. And I dusted off the Canon 40D and bought a GH4. Then I went to get the GH5, which is sitting right here. Ironically, I don't have this sitting here ever and went to upgrade to that. And so I went to sell my GH4. I drove to Starbucks, white knuckled it. And then on the way back, had that Shark Tank moment of there's got to be a better way. I love that. And yeah. that was, and that that truly right there, that was the beginning of it. Okay, that was a catalyst that built into it. Just that one specific experience, which was pretty cool. Yeah, it so was I like, guess yeah, it was like somebody entered my brain like Inception or something. Right, planted the. Thought. I'm sure it was seated there. I'm sure you've had pains yeah. along the way. You're trying to buy other equipment and stuff like that. So I'm sure I used it's... reverb for years, and so as a musician, and so I was like, we need a reverb for camera gear. That's how it started but then realize that it's much more than just camera gear that creators use. They use lighting, they use audio gear, they use segues, they use computers, hard drives, anything like that. That makes a lot of sense. There's there's probably, I'm not a musician at all. I have no music. I, I can't even hold a tune. It's pretty bad. But I would say that there's probably a lot more touch points into music than I think your average person would realize. As far as tech, equipment. Absolutely. And there's a lot of crossover as well, too, right? That I have some X reverb employees. I have one working with us right now, partner with us, Pierce Quadina, and a fantastic guy. And he says all the time that musicians are photographers, are musicians. And it's true. And I saw it like on forums, you see the lifestyle yeah. of people. And so you'll see this guy that was a filmmaker that as a filmmaker on social media it's funny how we know people from social media sure i was like oh it's a filmmaker and then you see him post a a video of them playing guitar or i phone do he's a big guy that does phones friends with gerald undone who's partnered with gear focus and there's a video of him playing piano with his family singing behind him It's, it's that creative side i think yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that actually, I think that kind of nails it. It's just that collective creative side right. and those different outlets that that people will explore. And But when you, so jump into that inception of the company, did you, what was market research? Because me as somebody who's not inundated into that creative zone, as far as like photography, filmmaking, music, I would probably jump to, personally, I would start doing some market research and I would, of course, look at eBay are there even other options in the arena of this tech world that like a platform that this gear focus? There's no one else doing what we're doing. We're, there's mm-hmm. no one else doing it as a marketplace. There was a player and they're gone. They're no longer doing it. I think there was a couple when we started uh, and I, I didn't even find them until after seven months of running gear focus. And I was like, Oh, what's this mm. company? And they didn't laugh. They, they folded. But there's places like KEH and other places. The old school model of you're a camera shop and I'm going to give you, Paul, 50% of the used value for your gear. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if a camera's a thousand bucks and you could sell it new or you could sell it used directly on eBay for 750 minus fees or on Gear Focus for 750 minus fees, then you can, I'm sorry. (laughs) Let me stop for a second. I just confused myself because I said eBay and I was like, why did I use eBay as an example? No, no, no. Because I did. I think back to when we started. Like when we started, there was eBay. Yeah. yeah, So when it was perfect too, is like when you had your hand up, that's perfect. Because when I see that, I can chop it out. That's why like when I used to do the podcasts in the studio, they're like, just raise your hand if you want to reset your brain for a second. Yeah, yeah. Because then it's easy when I'm scrolling through, I can just go snip. You know what I'm saying? Perfect. 
That's pre- percent. There was a couple other competitors though, and then just high fees. So what we originally thought was going to be, we're going to slide in here with an opportunity of shaving off the fees, just like Reverb did to eBay. And I'd already heard that and knew it because they were three and a half percent seller fees when they started. And eBay at the time, I think was like eight or 10 or whatever. Now eBay is like 15 or 20. It's is crazy. It really? Oh it's my God, so no high. Like after all the oh. hidden fees, it's crazy. So we were like, oh, less than half the fees of eBay. That was all our yeah. advertising. Now we realize that people don't care as much about the fees as they do about safety because fraud's been up to over 200% since last year, okay. online e-commerce fraud. And we're obviously a target, Paul, because of yeah. the value of this gear that if they get away with it, they're talking, you're talking about thousands of dollars versus oh, hundreds absolutely. of dollars. Some That's of those, like, I've seen some of those red cameras and uh, some of the other ones, they're 10, just sold, Yeah, grand. one just sold like 14,000. It's uh, insane. $14,000 yeah. camera. So. I, I could not imagine <laughs> if, if my gear got hijacked in right. some way, shape or form. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It happens all the time. So are... this is a layman's question then too. So forget eBay. What about like Amazon marketplaces and those type of stores? Or is that all just, is all a well, Amazon, Amazon marketplace was never intended to be for used, right? Like got I it. don't yep. go to Amazon for used gear. If I That's see fun. a used version of something that I really want, and maybe it has actually has pictures and stuff because it's just weird yeah. the way that Amazon works with that. I've bought one thing, I think, over the past yeah. 10 years. No, and that, that actually makes sense because obviously I'm, I'm really diving into the inception of the company. So I guess that you're talking about a user profile and that user profile does not fit. To that Amazon space. didn't fit. Being ancient photos yeah. didn't fit. The camera shops didn't fit. The, the old models, the Ebays were high fees and more and more scammers showing up harder to use that platform. And there really just wasn't a reverb for camera gear. Okay. That was the original inception idea, right? Now we're in the creator's marketplace. We're much more than just camera gear. We're expanding beyond that, but still laser focused on that. You're 5.2 billion used camera gear US only. Really? It's that big of a market, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's big. It's very big because, and then you add in Apple computers, hard drives, phones, things sure. like that, that these creators are also yeah. using, buying and selling. Yeah, and the requirement of actually the, the final output of right. the creative process, whatever that is. If it's right. a video still, you, you, it has to get processed through some type of computer, yeah, PC, someone, or whatever. Someone listed a one wheel that like Casey Neistat run, uh, rides around on New York. Like someone listed yeah. one of those for sale. So, oh my gosh, that's funny. And they play video yeah. games too. So video games start showing up like the components for steering wheels for like PlayStation. Oh, I could see that too. I could see the but game. Yeah, the ran- the- that's random. It's not as much as the, the main. No, player. but you're still talking about again too, from a business, just a dial back business perspective, that user profile is going to have a, a better technology uh, a little bit more tech savvy, a little bit better handle on what's out there, the type of gear they want specific, yep. even though I would, I'd personally say the market is flooded with a lot of, I don't want to call it low level. So even to something simple, if I'm going to, I actually did search for my younger boy. I wanted a old school video, just a camera, SD yep. card, flip screen, a uh, little minimal, just Girl, so I think he just, handy cam. Yeah. Just a little handy cam. Exactly. Right. That's what it is. But you go out and you start searching and maybe this isn't the best example, but it's because it's a lower level entry level right. pro- uh, product, but it's not a high end high gear. But the, I think there's a lot of product out there that's flooded the market from either foreign markets or manufacturers that just fill. Yeah, um, I think that's a really good point, Paul. I never even thought about that. So that type of camera gear is not really our focus right now. Yep. And that's what it hasn't showed up because that's more of like your Craigslist style. Yeah. I want to get rid average of the consumer camera, I'm probably uh, asking entry. 20 bucks for it. Yeah. Or 50 yeah. bucks for it. Yeah. And it was, I guess to use that same example, it was maybe around the hundred dollar price point and it actually came with a little exterior microphone, a little additional camera that, or I'm sorry, a little bit of lighting, a little bit of additional light. Yeah. But it'd be point. interesting. I mean, that's a really interesting question. The, the reason it's an interesting question is we're in the process of building a you know, bigger database of the gear. So as that shows up, people say sell my sony handycam hopefully we'll start ranking for terms like that and people will start choosing to sell that type of stuff on gear focus versus 
you're just like Etsy and like just random. Yeah. Or a general consumer site, like not to bring up Amazon again, but just a large general. Yeah, what came and think of the name of the other one that's more like general, not Etsy. It's more for just random stuff. It's like a well, like Pinterest or something or. Um... No, not Pinterest. It's an actual market. <laughs> Macari. Oh, Macari. Okay. Yeah. But to me, Macari is like cheap. Yeah. It's too, it's, I don't want to use the, I don't know if we can on this. I'll try to keep it clean. The, there's just crap, right? There's just yeah, like random, absolutely. you can sell whatever you want on Macari. What? See, we review, yeah. that's the other big thing too, is safety is we review all sellers and list them. Yeah. You can go and you could create a Macari account and list a picture of this guitar pick and put a hundred bucks and sure. you, it would show up and they will sense. deal with it later. And that's a big point. I'd love your feedback on this. While all those types of marketplaces are decreasing and reducing friction to sign up, list, and sell. Okay. We're doing the opposite. Okay. I our inner our inner office joke is we're gonna send out little devices that prick your finger and take blood samples mm-hmm. to be able to sell in gear focus because yeah. it is about the safety. We're talking about thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, hundred thousand dollars of equipment. Absolutely. So with ID and stuff like that. But uh, really quick, it's it's interesting because yeah, the anyway, yeah. No, because that's an interesting market uh, position. <laughs> nice. No, that's an interesting market position because you're talking about there's so many companies that are just trying to create. So let's call it ease of process under the guise of ease and process. Mm-hmm. Just quick numbers, volume and turning up the dial and allowing just a very because they're probably and I don't want to I don't want to get too far off on this. Maybe or maybe not yet is is because there are waves in the tech industry that you have to hit the certain windows to gain momentum. But let me come back right. to the ease of process. There's actually, I want to say the a higher barrier of entry. So a little bit more exclusive. And I do, yeah. I appreciate you guys using the word, the safety, because it's not something that I think at first hand that I would think of, but I know that once I have a product or I'm trying to create a transaction, I would think of it. It would be like, oh, wait a second. Yeah, you think How of do it, I know that this you deal think is it going the through? first message you get about your gear, right? Like yeah. we get, I get calls, we get calls every single day, especially if stuff sells really fast. If someone just joins, because we are still, even though we've been around for four years, we're still new to a lot of people that would be like, oh, I just listed that two days ago. Is this for real? Yeah, is it real? <laughs> is this yeah. legit? Yeah. Like, yeah, they sure. sold it yet. Sometimes there's just yeah. a message about their gear. No, everybody has a healthy level of skepticism built into, yeah. the, <laughs> into their DNA. But honestly, if you have the, oh, I guess that too, then you have... I guess when somebody, this is obviously specific to your company, but also too, I'm just thinking from a general market standpoint of, of building a company around this. Um, when somebody enters their product or creates a, what did you call it? Do you call it a store or a, a listing? Uh, yeah, seller. Listing. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. sure. So in that seller profile, in that listing, are there, I'll say, triggers or are there keywords that they're entering in there that's getting so if there's somebody in the market for the 40d you use that example mm-hmm. when we first started talking it was once you listed that is how d- does that trigger buyers that actually are, are in those search patterns or do people have some type of way of just r- raking and watching the the feed of new product yeah, no, that's a great question. So that's like a follow the search feature we're actually working on right now. Okay. We rolled out into a new platform in March. We've gone through two platforms. I found my tech co-founder, Kyle, a few months back. So we're restructuring the foundation of the tech and of the platform and with increased security front of mind, but also tapping into some huge buckets of inventory via API to the point of sale systems of camera shops help the mom and pops compete with the big dogs, right? Let them move mm-hmm. some more uh, inventory. Yeah. And Reverb did the same thing. And other marketplaces do the same thing. You got to tap into this cold start problem, Andrew Chen. Mm-hmm. And so th- that's our forefront of we're in this new tech. Now we're going to do things like tap into inventory. And then once there's enough inventory, absolutely. And that's part of that master gear database that we're building. So if we have a Canon 40D 
there's a master product, all listings are associated to that. So now we can actually say if it's one more, if something new gets added to this page, it notifies anybody that's following that listing. So you have okay. all these buckets of following and being notified. And then even with an app soon to come out next year with SDK notifications. So it's instant, right? So if you're truly looking for a rare piece of gear, you're going to be notified like that. We even thought about memberships to give exclusive exclusivity, exclusive. Sure. Yeah. A little like early access or direct yeah. access at a certain, maybe time, would it be like a time window type of thing? Exactly. Be, like maybe they get yeah. an hour, they get one okay. hour from a time a new listing shows well, up. It's funny because you do see that in parallels in other industry that completely unassociated to this. The, there is that kind of level, either a pre-launch, a private listing or exclusivity to right. information. It's really just an early adopt, right. early access to information. You actually see it even in the real estate market. There's a private listing network that right. the brokerages can put that on because whatever right. reason it is, we don't have to get into that reasoning because that could just be like maybe the property or the property. And, and we'll just call it a product in this case because right. it could be other aspects, other industries, but that it's not ready for market or yeah. that's something with the timing, but it's yeah. creating a little bit of buzz or it's, it's testing the market. So at that point too, and, and maybe you want this, maybe you don't want it, but maybe sellers could test the market on a price point that at that level. I'm not sure if there's an early, well, little bit of yeah, that's interesting. And we don't have to go down to every rabbit hole of things that we talk about, but be interesting to to see what the opportunities were there. Yeah. Is that. there a thought too of some type of how do you how would I say this? Is some type of validation. Like it's I hate to I brought that whole real estate kind of comparison with this validation of the gear. Kind of, yeah, and gear and translate into the We're doing that right and... now. So the seller, you'll see by every seller, it says verified by gear focus. If it does okay. not have, that means that we've never verified them. Uh, Got it. So, so what about a value on the product then? Is there, are there estimates? Is, like how would somebody value their product? Is it just the individual kind of that's uh, the other saying? Thing, that's like the master portion of... is like massively important. And we've got about 5,000 products and building more and more every day, hundreds. So is there a suggested retail? Yeah, or we'll resale? have new and then we will use technology to get average used values for everything because we don't oh, have enough cool. data on yeah. every single camera that's out there. We haven't sold millions of cameras yet. So we can get that information and serve that up. And if there isn't, just saying that usually things sell at 75% of new value. So if, if it's a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's I think where I was going at it. If there's either kind of the wide brush stroke. Or yeah, that's what, part of that master and... database. There. And then even serving up affiliates, ser serving up other opportunities. I don't want to give all our No, that's all right. Away, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, and those are, sometimes these numbers are arbitrary if something yep. is a thousand dollars. It's just a general brush stroke. Well, it's also, it also gives you better filtering to find what you're looking for. We're getting out of the world of mass emailing. You don't want mass emails. You don't want a general newsletter from a company. Yeah. No, you don't. You don't yeah. want that. It's too much. It's wasting right. our life away of just deleting spam email, promotional email. Yeah. At this point, exactly after... intentional, exactly what it is personalized for me. And that's what Pierce is working on of making sure that our users only get, if they're a wedding photographer, you do not want to be sending them cinema camera gear emails. Right. They don't. Yeah. Don't that makes care. sense. They don't yeah. care. Like they can choose to update their profile and their settings for that. But I right. even just over the past week, I don't know if you've, you've done this. I find myself literally unsubscribing from almost every email. Yeah. Especially before. as the holidays roll in, they obviously get a yeah. little more. Oh, that and, I forgot about that company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Friday, exactly. baby. Yeah. Yeah. What's funny too, is there's again, to be redundant, you and I have known each other for a long time and talked business for decades at this point. And I think that I think of the, the old, cause I'm thinking of data, like profiles, data. Right. So the old would be maybe classified in a, in the marketing world as a persona or a buyer profile or whatever, however you want to categorize that. And it obviously that the essence of that is still there, but now from a data driven perspective, is it all analytics? Is it just, do you feel like it's all aggregate, all aggregators? Is there any art in the, the tech world in, in that? Is it, or is it all just basically response and trade-off between search and 
Yeah, I think I think it is a lot about personalization just because of the mass amount of tech and data that gets thrown at us, right? Like mm-hmm. I just read a stat the other day, really scary, but it basically said if you spend X amount of minutes or hours, as most people do, on yeah. social media, and then you add that up, like it comes to years of your life. They're <laughs> literally taking years of your life. I'm sure. Away. And I have no doubt. Really Absolutely. scary, man. Like yeah. it is yeah. really eye opening to yeah. put the phone down and let. And so I've been trying to start with intention. Yeah. Why am I picking up my phone? Am I researching something or is it work or is it leisure? Because that line is blurred nonstop. Absolutely. You go yeah, from I, social media personal to something business to an email to a text message to a wife thing to that thing. And you never are able to focus in on just work for an hour or right. a, you know, even a half hour at a time. It feels like we're constantly distracted. So that's, I don't know. That's an No, I agree with you. I think that I wouldn't even want to add it up. I know our phone can log that information. And I, I know that there even are even charts in there of our usages. Right. In our, in so our if eyes. someone's watching this podcast right now on their yeah. phone, shut it off. Go live your exactly. life. Go exactly. take a walk in nature. <laughs> it's funny because it's, I, for me, it's mindlessly scrolling through Instagram. That's mine. I don't even, I, I think there's yeah. times where I'm scrolling through. I don't even, I don't even know if I saw anything. I think my, I'm just scrolling through and turning in my brain. Now, some of it's distraction. Yeah. Some of them just maybe run. This is terrible, but maybe even running out the clock in the day. I'm just, I'm just maybe spent. Yeah. I just want to plug, unplug. I'm not saying good, bad, or ugly. It's just something that I'll do. I'll blindly yeah. pick up the phone, start scrolling through. And all of a sudden it's a half hour later. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that my, my mind just got hijacked. So to that point is hours, days collectively could be years of your life are sucked on to this visual, you know, succubus train of, yeah, of sorts. This yeah. Train of this, yeah, it just sucks you in. And it, it's tough though, too, because I know that I consume a ton of content on YouTube. So there is an element of it is truly want to learn. I want to soak in as much right. education as I can. But so many things you're watching are either if there, there's the bite size, there's a little thought process, or you're watching an hour long podcast with on somebody. And of course there's a few nuggets of gold, but there's still a, just a massive time of occupants that's chewed up on that. Yeah. And I think night. nuggets of gold, this podcast is for business people, obviously that are listening. Yeah. We're going to, yeah. So it's, you know, um, and start, we're talking about startups. We're talking about running a business. Look, anybody can start a business, right? Something that we've talked with a, a lot of people about lately. Anybody can start a business. I could go start, we, you and I could start a business after this call. We get in 15 minutes, we could launch a business. Yeah. Idea. Right. It's worth nothing. The ideas are worth nothing. And this is why when it's like, oh, I got this great idea. Like, you remember when you were younger, you're like, oh, I got this great idea. Absolutely. Someone's going to buy this idea. Absolutely. And it takes you years to realize that ideas are nothing without execution. Nothing. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's cheap. Ideas are cheap, right? Idea monkey, right? The idea, that whole thing. But grinding it and finding consistency or as my newest saying, which my li- my wife loves that I, I use this. She used it yesterday. Stacking wins, baby. Stacking wins. Nice. You know, like, yeah. Because that is truly what it's about. Because you will get knocked down. Sooner yeah, or later, you're going to get knocked down. Yeah. And you have to keep going. And you have to keep you'll, finding that next thing. Yeah. You'll get set back, knocked down. You'll get stalled out. You'll get burnt out. And that, so jumping a little bit to that. There's two things. One is that you sent me that book and I did yeah. start listening. I started listening to the audible on it. it very okay, cool. cool. Very good book. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Do you know the author or is that something you found or what's uh I don't know him. I know him through the group that for startups for marketplace. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed, I haven't gotten through the whole thing cause it was just, you just gave it. No, over. And it's not um, a sit down and uh, listen to it. Yeah. You're not going to buzz through it. And it's uh, a little said, technical right. and stuff like that, but I really like the outlook on, the networks, what is an, like almost defining or categorizing 
what a network is and the exchange of where that network hits as far as the people, the users. I just found that a very interesting perspective. It's it almost when I was going through it, it was like this feels like common sense, but I just haven't heard it articulated in that fashion before from the exchange of just a net, the idea of what is a network. And then so, he goes into the network effects of a marketplace specifically. Yes. And that's that cold start, the title of the book, Cold Start. If people haven't heard of it, definitely check it out, especially if you're in marketplace, run in a marketplace. But it could be used to any business where the community is a, a big part of it, right? Because as more users join a marketplace, more listings show up, which makes the value for all of those members that much better. Mm -hmm. Put it in layman's terms, if you were a seller, like, hey, Paul, tell all your friends about Gear Focus because it's only going to help. Yes, it's going to help me too. Yes, it's going to help Gear Focus. Yes, we know that. But it's going to help you and it's going to help everybody that you tell because there's going to be more of what you're looking for for an affordable price and more people looking for what you're selling so that you get the most for, so there's more competition. So you get the most for your used gear. It's win situation. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's how it is with marketplace. So Airbnb, more places to stay. I went to right. go to a concert and I was looking for an Airbnb. It didn't work. Why? There wasn't enough places close to where I was looking. Yeah. So and Airbnb that's in that situation was yeah. useless to me. Yeah. They even in the book too, and I'm not going to try to remember the recited, they were talking about yeah. Uber, what that entry level of a, a how many cars to how many users it would take to open up a market. Yep. They touched on that. And I was like, that's really fascinating because yes. if there's too few drivers or there's not enough demand or if there's oversaturation and that, that applies to really applies to any business in, in yep. essence, but Predominantly in the tech, in that tech realm, it's a fascinating correlation where, with between the direct users and the, the ability to deliver and those consistent deliverables, which is again too when you get into deliverables and that user experience, um, that's going to actually be a mindset that you're going to set out in the vision, the goals, and stuff too. So I, I guess you know what? Right. Let me jump into that the yeah. UI, the UX of kind of what you develop, and I know that mm -hmm. we've talked over the years, last couple of years about this, and I know that was. There was a lot of work and intention and roadblocks and hurdles and, and setbacks yeah. and on the UX and the UI, just even on that level too, from, from a base level. I don't know if there's something you can touch in on that, in that arena or want to share. UX, UI is so important for us at Gear Focus, specifically because these are creatives. So I wanted it clean. Okay. And we accomplished that because we got feedback from users verbally on the phone. We're like, well, it's a great website, really clean, organized. Like you go to eBay. I just was there today looking at co price comparisons and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much copy. Yeah, it's a hot mess. Read through like so much stuff, like grandfathered in. Of throw, oh yeah, put that in there, put that in there, put that in there. I understand it. We want to add some more stuff to ours as well, too. But we also want to be very intentional um, what we're putting and where we're putting it. And But then we're also still a young company. We can only develop so so fast as well, too. Yeah. And that's the, tr the struggles with startups is you might not have the manpower or the money to get the vision accomplished. Yeah. And that, Which, uh, that, that was the toughest for the UX UI because it's still nowhere where I want it. Right. It's, it's right. clean. It's okay. It's clean. But yeah. yeah. I think some of it too is that's founder, CEO, the inspire. I don't, here, I don't want to speak for you, but I know for myself too, it's, I don't want to say it's never good enough, but I always want. No, I, it isn't. You know, it's love never good. And and you, if it's good yeah. enough, then you sell it. Then you exit. If you, you ever go. get to the point where you're like, this is good enough. That you yeah. should probably exit because you're not going to bring anything new and powerful to your customers unless you're just, yeah. you know, status quo of providing them with the best service, right? If you've got your yeah. business model down, you know who you are and what you do good, at, you, you do great, then just stick with it. Yeah. Do you know that longevity 
of that too, because you get into business, business terms, acronyms, LTV, lifetime value of a client. And then obviously the cost, the acquisition cost of a client yeah. or a customer, whatever that's classified as. And if you're looking at, like I say, a time horizon, everybody goes into business thinking they're going to be the biggest, most successful thing ever and make a ton of money. Some people go into it knowing that they're going to have an exit and sell at some point. There's multiple intentional and obviously that time horizon could, but I think from, um, uh, uh, this is going to couple a couple of different things onto this. So in that LTV, cause you're talking about retention, remarketing. So I guess what I'm asking a little bit of insight, I want you to just, just riff on this a little bit, but you have somebody who buys a $10,000 camera on this. Um, are they repeat buyers? Is this something that, you know, or is it the ancillary and adjunct equipment that's going to, they're going to want to continue to come back on? I'm not going to oversimplify an ex this made up customer, sure. but with the website and the platform, is there from an LTV or a repeat business or resurrecting old clients or retention, something in that window is that I'm sure you have intentions to continue to have cause the same, the same people keep coming back. Is there something in there that you found that it's one and done, or do you feel like the, the, the people that you serve are going to be, is it really designed for that longevity? It's designed for the longevity and I'll answer it in two ways. One, and, and hopefully this will make sense to anybody. One is we have 300 million creators in the world. Everybody wants to be a YouTuber really? or an influencer, yeah. right? I cannot tell you how many people go out and drop 10 grand on brand new camera gear, lights, everything. And then six months later, realize it's not for them. Yeah. And go to flip it. And that's why we're in a prime spot. That's why no one's just starting out should buy new gear. Right. Nobody. God, that's actually right? really interesting. Because you don't even know what you, because you, think about yeah. it. You're like, hey, I'm going to buy this car, but I don't know if I'm going to have a license in six months. So <laughs> probably don't want to buy one that you lose $5,000 driving off the lot. It's the same yeah. brand new camera gear. You're going to lose part of the value of that. So why not just not pay that right out of the gate by used because there's plenty out there to get you started. Don't get set on one specific brand new model that just came out. You don't need it. You do not need it. Not one creator needs the latest and greatest Sony camera that just came out. So answer number one is one and done's can be for multiple reasons, right? Maybe they had a bad experience with a seller, right? Maybe something happened. Maybe they just can't find the gear they're looking for at Gear Focus right now because we still don't have massive amounts of inventory. But it could be one and done where it's like they tried photography and it didn't work out for them. That's a really fascinating thing. Yeah, we'll and jump for, on that in a bit. But. Yeah, but then there's the, the other part of it, which gets investors excited, is that if I convert you from a buyer to a seller or from a seller to a buyer, it's a 7 to 8x increase in LTV. Okay. So your lifetime value is approximately 8x. The moment mm. you become a seller, if you've bought something, or if you're a seller that sold something and now turned around and bought something. Other features that we're coming out with next year is once you buy something, it will be a one click to resell that piece of gear because it'll be associated oh, really? with a master product. And all you'll have to do is take some new pictures and write a new description and set the price. Okay. And that's it, but it'll be right. one. And then you'll even be able to store the gear that you own inside of the app as well, too. Oh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. D is there a personal dashboard then or an individual? Yeah, yeah no, you got a personal yeah. dashboard and we're flushing that out. And that's where the API is into the point of sale system light speed that we're tapping into. So any camera shop that has a, that uses light speed will be able to tap into gear focus and be able to just, it's just an integration. It's like a plugin. God, that's a, so that you really touched on something that's pretty interesting as far as the the creative space. They have three hundred million people, yeah, in it, and probably hundreds of thousands entering in, yeah, all the time, and leaving, God, is, yeah. and leaving. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, there's very few. I even think too, even with God, I don't know. I I really, I'm gonna totally misquote this. So it was the gist of it, it was like if you have most podcasters, even when we make it to like, uh, it, there's a stat. If you do ten, you're 90% or something like that. And if you hit mm -hmm. like 21 is another big benchmark. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, if you exceed a certain amount, I really, it wasn't a big number. I want to say it was between 20 and 30. If you exceed 20 or 30 and have that level of consistency, you've 
outpaced 90% of the marketplace. And I can't, I'm totally butchering that. So I need to figure right, out right, what that exact yeah. one is, but there is something right around there where yeah. it's not even, a, it's not even a lot, it's not that much that right. shows how many people drop out so very quickly. But I think in, it also conveys that the value of what, what you guys at that, that, that industry that you've picked is a fascinating one in that sense. Cause it really ties into the creative, almost an intangible. It's, an it is, it has been, I'll be, bla- I'm a very honest person. You know that Paul, it's been a love hate situation with, cause a love do not care for, I'll say. Sure. Cause it, a little love frustration relationship. Yeah, you touched upon it. You're like, okay, I'm going to YouTube. I'm going to learn something, but there's, plenty of people we know that they just troll they don't have a life or whatever it is well that's true troll people that's another posting yeah. comments and you're spending hours and days just you know beating up somebody that's jumping on a camera going you should do it like this and you should do these are individuals this is not even like a company you're complaining about yeah. this is just a person <laughs> lighten up francis God, that's interesting <laughs> that's interesting that you have that much critical criticism about something oh and, and it's amazing it's individual the, level yeah it really uh, is some of the comments are amazing and that's why i realized i can't be i could never be a influencer like sure that like yeah. i like making videos on music gear and certain things like that and camera gear and whatnot but not when i'm really implementing a strong opinion about something absolutely because they'll rip you apart and, and they'll say oh you're selling out you're you just got sp- sponsored by this brand. Yeah, that was the whole goal of me starting a channel was to make thousands of dollars and not leave my house. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, and yeah, people do so- it and instead of going, hey, kudos for getting that sponsorship. Great job. They're like, oh, and this is sponsored by Squarespace and this is sponsored by so and so. Even though that's a whole nother topic of the amount of money that, that is. creators are really yeah. making in. It's insane. No, I. So. God, there's so many places I could go with this because it ties into, so I'm going to go personal really quick and then I want to come back to a couple of points, but yeah. even for me to do this is there's an exposure level and there's people I've already invited and had some conversations with that are trying to, they've almost intentionally flipped a script. It's not a, it's not a little game of a gotcha, but that have wanted to sell their service, their coaching, whatever else that whatever that is for them. Right. And try to find the chink in your armor type of thing and kind of exploit that even just. Really? So it's, it, yeah. Yeah. I've had that happen to me, oh my but awful. I also have had to, I'm opening myself up to that in a sense. Yeah. That's, yeah. We open you know, ourselves up when we do business, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely. Conflict, and, right. Like yeah, my wife does. Conflict, it's like, why right. are you raising conflict with certain people? It's, it just, and it's, it just happens. It, you know? Yeah. So I think that actually, this is going to be an odd little connection point, but it kind of ties in because we were talking about the LTV and even just the acquisition cost. So I, Mm -hmm. again, many different industries I've had touching points into, and some of them are the barrier, the higher barriers I'm entry of getting those clients. And some of them are highly transactional. So you might have a bunch of your invoice amount or your invoice count is very high. So you can have to be careful of how much it costs to get an acquisition. So where I'm going with that, what you touched on is where there's critical, there's criticism for an individual to just be like, yeah, I really like this camera, but I want to sell it now. I'm making it up. But, and somebody criticizes your lighting was really terrible and your deliverance and you didn't have enough pause in your cadence or some, some weird, like right. overly professional criticism that you would receive that this is just not the window to do it. If there was somebody on your platform that kind of did, that's nasty, but you're spending time and energy now combating the, you mentioned the trolls or the, those kind of negative influences that people are just almost looking for, I don't want to say a fight or looking for agitation and what the cost of that, I'm not asking you the question. It's just, what is the true cost of that, that aspect yeah. of the drag down portion of any right. business, which kind of ties into what you were talking about. Just, it's just, there's hurdles, there's stumps, there's failures, there's all along the way. And those are just some of those of, do, you, do I have to work with, if I'm working with 10 people, out of those 10 people are too combative, eight are going to disappear. And there's that one golden one. It's like those, some of those, some of the 
the percentage yeah, is that comes into firing a customer, right? It depends because I was Absolutely. referring more to the YouTube comments and feedback and social media. Yeah, but it but ties I'm, into it because if you're trying to acquire followers, you're trying to acquire, you're trying. To, I wouldn't say and when I say acquire, I don't mean acquisition in the sense of. Yeah, you know, I'll get, let me give you an example. I think I know where you're time, going. I think I know where you're going with it, and so this yeah. is. A, I think this is a fun one. We do get people who call and they're like, my favorite one was when Gerald Undone did a fire sale on his YouTube channel and he auctioned everything off on Gear Focus and he crashed the website. And this was before our, new, our current platform. We were in an old platform that wasn't very stable. And uh, he crashed the website. And on his video, in the comments, my favorite comment since I launched Gear Focus was, their site doesn't even work. What kind of global operation is this? <laughs> and I went, yeah, baby, look at this That's global it. operation. That's great. Yep. And so 200 and square so, feet of global operation. And I shared that story. This is a good fun story. But if I'm on the phone with somebody and they're like, you know, really upset about something, I tell it exactly like it is. I say, you're speaking to the founder. I don't care if they think we're too small or what. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not even looking at any of that. I'm just saying, this is where we're at. We only got a couple developers right now. We'll get to it as much as possible. But I'll tell them straight up. Like, if they're asking for a new feature, it should be like this. It was like, you're probably right. Are yeah. you a developer? I would love to have you come make it like that. Because I'd like it like that too. But I can't afford to pay for that right now. And it's not on my short list of laser focused. And in business, we have to be laser focused. We can't be like... Yeah. One person said this, and therefore we're going to do that. That's why you have feedback. That's why you have meetings and data and analyze that right. data that you get and the feedback that you get of what to do next. For us, we know it's more inventory, hands down, more inventory. We're getting plenty of people coming and putting eyes on the site, but they're just not finding what it is that they're looking for. So as soon as okay, more so inventory shows up, that's going to change. Can I ask too, the classification of inventory? Is it physical inventory? Is it digital inventory? Is it uh, a little bit more inventory we have? Yeah, that you're mentioning inventory. Uh, inventory is, is the that, physical, not the physical that we carry, but that the sellers sure. list. So yeah, no, so there's a digital, yeah, there's a digital the inventory. inventory. Yeah, absolutely. So there's an actual physical product, of course, but I'm just saying the inventory. So for your business model specifically, it would be the a digital inventory. Yes, Those, the digital the, inventory the of the listings. You yep. know? So are there 10 versions, 10 Canon 40Ds for sale? If someone's looking for that. We're using the yeah. oldest Canon camera. I love it too. Camera. I love it. I know. You got to start using some of the new stuff. The I don't, Canon yeah. 6D is a great camera. I, I suggest <laughs> if anybody wants to pick up a phenomenal right. camera, Canon camera for 600, 500 bucks, it's a Canon yeah. 6D. That, that thing is magical. It's magic. Really? I, I it's one. funny too, because I've listened to other reviews on setting up like, say like a, a small studio and a lot of them are some of the Sony get a good, a lot of good reviews too. And I think they're just more of a cost effective. I didn't buy one. I just, yeah. I, I think everybody's kind of got their, their go-to depending on Sony's what the pretty popular. Is. Canon's still the biggest. Then Sony took over Nikon and Fuji and stuff like that. Fuji played on the retro looking cameras and Nikon did the same thing with their Z series. And that's what's hip and what's popular and what people want. Like the Fuji x 100 v it's the most fraudulent listed camera anywhere because really? you can't get it so huh. they know that if they list that camera that you can't find anywhere for cheap you're going to get some interaction and so we oh, have one guy That's like really try list that same fake listing over and over and we caught it every time and deleted it huh. and didn't, yeah. didn't even show up see that's the safety that people don't know yeah. that like we've caught dozens of listings just this week that got denied because they sure. weren't real. They're not from real people. These are the scam artists that you, and they're getting really good. Yeah. Uh, AI is crazy, man. Like you could go yeah. write an AI script and scrape listings off of eBay and then manipulate the images and the descriptions and everything. And it's, hey, I've had this camera for 12 years and uh, my aunt got it for me and I sure, got into sure. filmmaking and blah, blah. And that's what makes it look real. But, but the facts are in the security of what they're providing. So security information and ID 
things like that that's right. required. So let's jump to something else too really quick. Is if, cause We talked about the UI UX where you were started. I guess if yeah. there was somebody kind of listening that's starting up themselves that has that kind of next great idea that you had, it, it, let's just not say it's the exact same thing. Is there out of the box? You know what? If you're bootstrapping. Yeah, go out of the box. Too. Number yeah. one feedback is go out of the box. You're going to hit some brick walls. Deal with those brick walls because you're going to have brick walls and custom custom develop yeah. platform it anyway, unless you have a ton of money and a ton of cash to burn. Right. Custom development gets so expensive. That was my biggest And is it maintaining lesson. it too? So is it- Oh yeah, maintaining it. This is it, me not knowing. I'm not a program. Yeah, deciding. You yeah. got to decide all the elements that you're going to use. If you use someone else's platform, they're making all those decisions. Okay. They have the tech firm that's building the platform. You're then just providing feedback of things you'd like to see. And then you're at the, the mercy, the mercy of, them of them. Yeah. But can they change those? And then they could change those platforms essentially if they own that framework. If it's framework, if there's the, a stable, yeah, but yeah. some are just the way they work. So I'll give you a perfect Got example it. of a something that you can't really change later. So when you sign up at Gear Focus, you're signed up. Okay, it's the same login whether you're buying or selling. Okay. A lot of marketplace platforms, it's two separate platforms and two separate logins. Oh, really? Two separate so if you logins. have different, if you have a different function, so say the customer, client, whatever you want to call them, has a different function. If it's an outbound or inbound, those yep. a lot of those other yeah, they actually a seller, require a second. A buyer, you have two different logins. Okay. In fact, we were going to go with this company that this platform company. I, I won't drop their name as much as I want to. Just throw this company under. Sorry, the bus. don't. I yeah, won't. just. But they they're like, oh yeah, it's it's single user. It's one account. Blah 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 blah. And then I signed contracts to start working with them, and then I was on the a call with their developers, and I was like, okay, show me the, the single user login. This was like the next day after signing the paperwork, and and they're like, oh no, that's a separate login. They're separate users. And I was like, oh no, so and so said that it was single. Mm. He's like, they're like a hundred percent not. We've had this conversation so many times. It's the biggest question in marketplace platform, right? And so I called them back, and I was like, tear up that contract. It doesn't fit our model. Like, right. I don't want. I don't want that. It. I don't want the platform to function that way. Fascinating. So I would never now you know still that. need to be approved as a seller on Gear Focus. You have one login, and then you have to fill in all your bank account information and add a. But that's different. That's within yeah. the that's within the login account. Right. So right. that's fascinating. But I'm using that as an example, Paul. Right. Oh, it's interesting. We're talking about it. Does it, it? Can one platform change? There's some things they can change, and some things they can't. Right. Like the foundation of how things are built usually is not changeable, right? The fact that they chose to use Next.js or they chose to use a specific tech stack to, to develop on, so Angular, right? We were on Angular, it was an old one, and that sucked for SEO. You had to do server-side rendering, developers will know all these terms and lingo, but mm -hmm. it's not SEO friendly. It's, it's a hurdle that you have to hop over. So, so is that our, something like that? If somebody ran into that, is that a secondary SEO application? Again, I'm not a programmer, so don't, so you got to bear with it's me. It's only the I, tech stacks. It's the foundation, right? It's not like how things look and how they're functioning to you as a sure. user. It's to you as a company more, right? If, especially, oh, like, okay. yeah, especially with the SEO side, I guess it does affect the user. Do you think the auto thing will take out that? And that was a big. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the infrastructure of the platform is there's so many choices. There's so many choices. So you don't need to know anything about technology. So you're just about to build a website and you're going to build it from scratch. Now you go, how? With what yeah. tech stacks? Are you going to use Flutter for an app or are you going to use microsoft based or are you going to what oh, man. what type of technology are you going to use to build it and i now guess we're too because yep. you're posing an interesting aspect of and somebody who's whoever has their mind made up is going to know this but i guess in my mind i'm like okay then what at what point do you have to be app based but if you're consumer if you're a consumer I'm C2 you C2 asked C2 about C2 startups so no, i did specifically but, about startups that do not I guess yeah. in that sense, in the mindset, unless you're a, a developer too, yourself, it, it, it's a yeah. totally, it's a yeah. I guess my question is: Is are there apps that you can are there and 
this might be the wrong verbiage, are there frameworks or backbones of people that can buy for apps to create an app? Yeah, yeah that, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's all over the place. Okay. Yeah. Can you piggyback off of another type of an app if you had some type of marketplace store or something uh, like that? Or is that not quite depends the, on where you want to go. You might need to migrate. And that's the problem with technology, right? It's, yeah, you could. You talk to Joe, the engineer Joe, and he's going to say one thing and Betsy's going to say another thing of, and, that, and it's usually only based on what they know. So they're going to suggest mm. the software and the tech stacks that they know. So if you have a partner and they're an amazing Flutter app developer, clearly you want to build in Flutter because the biggest resource that you have on your team. I didn't have a tech co-founder when I started. That's the first thing that I would have done before even launching this type of business would have been to stay with a platform no matter if it was scalable or not in that platform because sometimes the fees then start to take over when you're using someone else's platform there's monthly fees subscription fees and they don't match sure. up with volume ah, okay the costs go up per transaction especially if it's a transactional based billing service so you can you can switch later you might have to do a full migration these are all discussions that i had with evan our tech uh, advisor He's not sitting there coding. He's just an advisor. Sure. And But there are some things I wish he would have said from the get-go. Yeah. Because he was very apt on, believe it or not, I think it was some wrong information. He's still an amazing guy based on what information and knowledge and experience that he has. We should not have gotten out of the, the first platform that we were in. Oh, before. interesting. Yeah, not until we were ready. Right. We weren't ready. We're still not even ready, to be honest. Yeah. But now we're in a very good position with the tech co-founder that we have and the platform that we have and the API into Lightspeed and all these new things that we're coming out with. Every week, there's new features coming out on Gear Focus. And that's right. what you want, right? As a user, you want to log into a platform and be like, "It was better. it's better than it was the last time I logged in. Yeah. That's all you want. You don't, you, you don't care that there's millions of things that... Like on the new platform, there's so many th things on the new platform that are better than the old platform. I have a, a guest. Got a little visitor. Yeah. How's it going, buddy? This is Zach. Zach, you're going to be on a podcast. Hi, Zach. We're in the middle of a podcast nice. recording. I'm Paul. Nice to meet you. Hi. This is Zach. Paul and I went to school together. Cool. Yeah. Went to yeah. high school together. Yeah. Cool. We also partied together and hung out together and did photography right. together and... All kinds yep. of stuff. It was over 100 years ago. <laughs> Did you know your dad's 140 something years old? No. Yeah. You know nah. that. <laughs> All right. I'll be out in a bit, bud. That was funny. It, it always I saw happened. the door kind of slide open a little bit. That I was saw perfect. your smirk and I didn't see it because it's behind my head. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's, so well, yeah, here, just like oh, platforms ahead. and startups, just start with an out of the box, build your MVP with that and don't get out of the MVP. Don't like feel, don't feel what would somebody, why than would what somebody you actually jump? are. Go based okay. on data, not emotion. Okay. And that was what my question was, is why would somebody jump? Do you feel like, oh, out of fear of not being able to scale out of something along the line of, this isn't going to have all the bells and whistles. This is yeah, it might have... be just one bell too, or two. Yeah. Let's say they'd be like, sure. I can't do X and in, in, in Q, right? I could Out see somebody alpha, getting hung up. So we're switching, um, and then you get, yeah. to, and then you get to the switching, and during that process, you realize Q really isn't that important. To yeah, the scalability of this company, that's not important. I'll give you an example. Can't canceled orders. We used to have the ability where people used to be able to cancel. A seller would be able to just click a button and cancel the order. But we couldn't charge them for the credit card fee because now credit card fee companies, mm. payment process, they don't return that 3%, 2, 2.5%, 3%. Absolutely. It is. And so we have to charge that to our sellers if they have to cancel an order for reason beyond our control, right? And would they cancel prior to shipping it? Is that kind of the window? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cancel prior to shipping okay. it. They used to have the option to just do that. Now they just say help with order and we cancel it for them. So it's one more step. But Got here's it. the thing. I was like, oh, no, we can't have that. We had that. We can't have that. We can't. And then I was like, and then I got asked the question where I was wrong. And I got asked the question. Let me ask you how many canceled orders you've had on average for the past six, 12 months. And it was like two or three orders, dude. 
right? Like it was so small yeah. that it didn't match up with 30 sure. hours of development time to change that process. Absolutely. It got yeah. shoved way down the list. So that's what I mean about deal with the actual data that your company is receiving. So what is the biggest limitation? It's inventory, right? It's the cold start yeah. problem. And that's why like, that's what I've learned over the past four years. I didn't do any of this perfectly. None of it, far from it, messed up tons of stuff. And I'll continue to make mistakes. I just hopefully won't make the same ones that I made the first four years in, in the business. But following the data, Follow the data. So, for cool. example, if you yeah. have, if you're doing a hundred thousand dollars a month, whatever it is, okay, and you had five thousand listings, you already know. Or let's say more accurately, let's say you do a hundred thousand dollars a month in sales, and you had four hundred thousand in inventory, valued inventory on the platform. Clearly, to do two hundred thousand, you need about eight hundred thousand dollars of inventory. Yeah, yep. It's as simple as that. It's not Absolutely. rocket science. No, we just need more inventory, and then more eyes, and then all of that comes with it. But if you don't have something for those people to buy, you struck out already. Yeah, you don't get another two strikes, right? Like you're already struck out because what Paul's looking for is not even on gear focus. Right. So yeah. having higher conversion rate and getting you as a customer, none of that matters. Now, follow the search, like you had mentioned, that'd be a big one because if you don't find what you're looking for, yes, we can get you to sign up and just say, be notified instantly of any new listings. Yeah. So we can now from a, you. Yeah. This is, uh, this is another tech question and whether you have it or not, though that programming for a search is I would imagine complex because then you could, if you were to create, say, a recommended. So if somebody's searching a specific brand or a type of camera or some type of usage in, some, in that category, that there would be recommendations. Or I've seen on websites, obviously the big ones, the recommended products. You'll see that. On, That's all AI now, right? Even is our that search, all AI? Yeah, all our yeah. search already does that on the website. That's pretty easy and that's been around for a while. Is it? Recommended okay. of it's based on data points, and that's the most important thing in any bit of data. So that's that master your database that we're building that is going to be rolled out soon. That will allow us to get that spider web going of all these connection sure. points and say, because we want to even reverse it as well, too. If you start storing gear in your locker on Gear Focus, we want to be able to reverse that process. So if someone's looking for a piece of gear that you have in your inventory your collection let's call it lock mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it but it's not for sale and there's no other listings but i'm looking for that and i really want that old canon 60 camera because i love it it's magical i could then say yes i'm willing to pay 600 dollars for that you would get a notification saying hey I'm is your Canon it. 60 Absolutely. camera collecting dust? Because if it is, we've got somebody who will give you $600 for it today. Oh, that's and amazing. And so if you list yeah. it, if I commit, especially you can make them commit just like an offer. Yeah. If one shows up within 48 hours, I'll pay 600 bucks for it. As long as it's in yeah. to excellent condition. And you sure, list sure. that. Yeah. Then you could be like, yep. Okay. Well, boom make a sale. That's amazing because it, it's, it's really cool to hear what's complex and what's not for you to say yeah. that's an AI driven. That's pretty yeah. neat. Because if in my mind, that would have been a, com there's a complexity of data points that have to have to connect and have to read to each other. So that's- yeah, We use Clavio for our email marketing and that pulls in a lot of event driven triggers. So sure. if a user searches for lighting, we can serve you up specific ads from lighting companies. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, uh, so here, yeah. no, that's all right. So we've been on for about an hour. Let's just, let's plan on doing another one, man. And we'll try to, yeah, you know, let's do another 